go, ratings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. You know we're back. It's League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you for a little more LPL summer placement action. That's right, getting the names right for the different phases of this LPL split and get an actual matchup. It's few and far between with this new seating that's actually marquee two big name squads, top esports versus LNG both 1-0 and o in their uh, respective groups. Well, same group coming into this one. And unfortunately for LNG, top esports, they still look a little bit angry after MSI. LNG might have been 1-0, and o, but one of the things you were keeping track of and, and seeing carry over from the spring split was a relative uh, lack of inspiration on this team to find and see and get that momentum rolling to start picking up kills, start putting that pressure on the enemy team. Game one certainly was a continuation of that problem for LNG because there was nothing going right for them and it was PES slowly but surely building up their advantage. And uh, eventually 369 gets spoon fed some kills. And you know what's not fun as an AD carry Ziggs? Is playing against the Fed Mordecai that just presses R on you. Big, big problems. Because you might feel like you've got a bit of power. You know, you're gaining an item. I'm close to this power spike. Something's going to happen. we got to pop off in a team fight. We get that team fight, and it's not a team fight. It's you versus the Fed Mordecai are on the other side. And most of the time, that equation's not going in your favor type of thing. Certainly did not against Mr. 369 in the top side for top esports. He was farming kills. The brand jungle for Tien, he was just farming damage numbers. Had the most done in the game at the end, which often happens with the brand if you've played any bit of ARAM. Uh, but 11k gold lead, 24 minutes stomp in the favor of top esports. Game two was a little bit closer, more competitive, but... The biggest gap, uh, I think it's time to start getting concerned about Mr. Scout. Because all he was doing in this series was up in the confidence level for Mr. Cream on the other side. And shout outs to Cream, because this is something that we wanted to see in response to MSI this whole year in general. Is this growth for him as a player to become a true star in the LPL and establish yourself at at least that tier and keep moving on through. Because if you're able to do that, this is a top esports that has championship potential with them. On the other side, Scout, as you laid out, questionable, worrying performances continue for him in the mid lane for LNG. I think this is one of those ones where it's a combination of problems going on and mistakes happening on the team that are manifesting the most in that mid lane and in the performance level that we are seeing from Scout. And a big part of that as well, you factor in Tarzan. No longer here with the team. I think this has been a more impactful loss than any of us could have really seen for this organization. I think a lot of us thought the world of Tarzan and what he did and how he unlocked a different level of play from Scout and how he was able to contribute with the team. Once that was gone, we didn't really ever see the replacement. And I mean, Weiwei certainly is someone that comes in with some pedigree, with some potential, has not delivered on any of it for LNG. And listen, Tarzan was the main scapegoat after that T1 series at Worlds last year where he got bumped out, he got gapped in that one, and they said, it's you're the problem, man. Get out of here. Well, it doesn't look like he's the problem, especially now that he's been getting picked up uh, by Weibo. But real quick, the game winning, this was kind of a sloppy game too. The game winning moment is... The rejuvenated Mako continues to have a resurgence. An absolutely disgusting Alistair flank in a 4v5 scenario to win the game. Uh, I feel like uh, sloppy is an understatement, maybe, in the performances that we saw throughout this game, too. It was pecking all over the place uh, for, to close out the series. It is top esports that does get that advantage, and it is largely in part to that flank from Mako, as you talk about. Everybody looked like maybe they've been playing this game half a year, close to a year type of situation in that game too. You saw the veteran in Mako making sure that he gets that flank, figuring it out, and getting the big engage onto the team, making it all happen for Top Esports. LNG probably still going to get out this group as the second spot, but uh, Top Esports 
feeling pretty good about a 2-0 start for them, and it's back-to-back 2-0s in the series, so 4-0 overall uh, for the squad. Coming back from MSI, JDG in a one-sided matchup against Thunder Talk, taking care of business. Specifically, we've talked about these carry junglers in the meta right now. Nobody loves these more than Kanavi on JDG. How about a 10-0, 10 performance on the Nidalee in Game 1? pretty darn good i think there's nobody in the lpl that you would trust or be more enthusiastic to take the reins for your team on a carry champion like your boy kanavi in the jungle and how he's been dominant uh, for now this two you know almost three year stretch in the lpl and what he's been able to do as that superstar jungler clearly to me numero uno in the system right there in the lpl and what he's been doing it's nidalee performance see the mechanics you see the decision making it's all there from kanavi i think one of the only things and this is really nitpicking here with jdg the problem is you gotta nitpick a little bit when we're talking about these top two top three teams in the lpl in order to be in that category we need a little bit more oomph from this top side from mr flandre if it's gonna be flandre there or if it's gonna be sheer because i don't know what's happened with sheer but this seemed to me like a great opportunity and a great matchup to roll with Sheer. And if, you know, unfortunately, that's kind of my only real thing against JDG in this series is I probably would have liked to have seen Sheer get experience, see where we're at with this type of thing to get a better picture of where I can start to vault you and start to put your potential this summer split of the LPL. Yeah, and you're harsh on JDG because the aspirations for this team are to win the split that should be their end goal i know tough task against the monster that is blg and even tes right now but i mean kanavi like 200 damage off from doing the most damage in both of these games for both teams he's playing at an elite level ruler actually making Jin do damage and look good on that pick i that's that's a skill in itself to be able to do that you see that every once in a blue moon nowadays, it seems, in pro play. He, he, he might creep up into the conversation about the meta, about an option that could be in there. You still usually don't see the damage come in like that. Oh, there was damage on Ruler's Jin, and he was making sure that that damage number kept going up against the other team is the way that this one went out, picking up. I think it was about 11 kills or something like that he had in this game. Pretty darn good from your boy Ruler. Would have been better if maybe we rounded out to a nice number that that goes with four just like Jin. but yeah we'll i mean there's always like... prog always work you could do uh on that Jin pick for ruler but listen ruler and kanavi look great in this series but yagao was definitely a passenger throughout this series and flandre uh you already mentioned it feels like in a, the first round these easier groups this is when sheer should be getting playing time early in the season and if he stumbles or if he struggles that's when you slotted Mr. Reliable Flandre because I think there's no question the ceiling is higher for a young guy like Sheer to see what he can reach. So the solo lanes are still a bit of a question mark despite the 2-0 start for GDG. It's like rolling in, you know, to the Elite Four and, and knowing you've got Cynthia's Garchomp and, and you know, Lance's uh, Salamance or something waiting for you to go up against because that is the titanic power. That is there for top esports. That is there for a BLG. JDG needs to find an equalizer, a neutralizer of some sorts in that top side to bridge between where you are with Flandre and 369 and Bin on top of all that. Very scary mountain to climb. And when you're, uh, you're looking at the rest of top esports, the battles, the advantages, the height that you're going to gain from the mid lane, from the bot lane, from the jungle, it might not be enough compared to what you'll be getting uh, when you're seeing what you've got from top esports, what you've got from BOG, and what you're looking at with yourself on JDG. It, it might be the development of a different play style, though, where they are playing. Obviously, jungle ADC are the strong suits for um, JDG, obviously no slouches on these other two top teams in the LPL but still incredibly early days I'm sure we'll be seeing Sheer and I'm sure we'll be seeing Kanavi pick up a whole lot more MVPs over the season <laughs> but a little bit more LPL over the weekend and of course the LEC 
kicking off for the summer split. So we'll be back after the weekend to break down all that action. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. Thanks for hanging out. And you know we will catch you on that flippity flip.